Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to talk to you about Lee and Lee's Unifan TL and TL LCD fans. These are available in 120 and 140 mil, and as you can see, offer some pretty interesting RGB lighting with mirrored effects and more. Obviously, the LCD version is probably the more interesting with the 1.6 inch LCD IPS display that's able to display a number of different things that I'll show you in a minute of 400 by 400 resolution. I want to talk to you about the different fan setups, the wiring logic, and all the things that you need to know about these because they are curious. For example, they come with reverse blade and standard blade airflow layouts and they also come in triple packs and single packs as a new wiring logic that's worth knowing about and as you can see some really interesting highlights the display on the lcd version allows you to do sensor readouts for example like gpu and cpu temperatures gpu and cpu load and other things and you can customize what you can see on the display as well in terms of the colors of the gauges and of the wording around there of what the reading is so you can customize that and obviously you can have different things on different fans and also you can get pngs and gifs and videos so you can really customize what's going on in your case you are however limited in the number that you can put in your case and that's kind of logical because Obviously, you wouldn't want to top mount these fans because you wouldn't be able to see the display. You can also rotate the display as well within L Connect and do some other things with it so you can customize that view depending on where you've mounted it and naturally sync the RGB lighting of the LCD fans with the standard TL fans throughout the case and make use of a number of different lighting effects from L Connect and you can then see that in all its glory. This is in the Evo RGB case, in case you're curious, which I've done a separate video on that I'll link to in the description. I'm also gonna do a full wiring guide. I'm gonna go into a lot of depth on these fans because there's a lot to it, and I think it'll probably be quite complicated for some people, but I'm gonna show some hints of that now and show off some of the steps for going through wiring it and the things to know before you buy. As you can see, I've got three LCD fans in the case here. They say you can have a maximum of seven, although there's some conflicting information on that because it could be six. And both sets of fans can be connected to the same controller. So I actually am running all the fans that you can see here off one single controller that comes with a triple pack of fans. But you can also get them in different variations. So I want to quickly show you some of what you can get here. Now obviously I've got the white version of these fans. You can get them in black as well. They're available in 120mm and 140mm. You start off with a single fan and this is what you get in the box. The fan itself and two cables as well as a little clip for the end which is curious in itself. Now the standard fans, not the LCD version, is interestingly designed where you can connect cables to both sides. And it actually has the ability to work on either side, so you can actually choose where your cable is coming out of. But also, these cables are different, as you'll notice. One's designed to plug into the controller, which comes with a triple pack, and the other one plugs into other fans. Now, if you buy a triple pack of fans, you get three fans and you get three cables. But what you'll notice is these are different to previous Lee and Lee fans in that you've got, again, cables to connect to controller and cable to connect to other fans. Usually, you'd have multiple cables to connect multiple groups to the controller. The other difference you'll notice immediately is that out of the box of the triple pack, you've got these clips on top of the pins that connect the unifans together. Now, that's for protective purposes, because when you've mounted it together, the end that you're not using, you can then put those clips on to cover them over to stop the fans from being shorted. There's some other interesting highlights here. You'll notice that there's no screw holes initially out of the box, but we'll get to that in a little while as well. So you can already see some pretty significant differences from previously in the Unifans, although some similarities as well. In that, for example, although they all have a zero RPM mode and will also spin up to different speeds depending on whether you've got the standard fans or the reverse fans or the LCD fans. So I'll leave details of the specs in the description, including the airflow. Now with the TL120 fans, you have the ability to connect up multiple cables, as I've said. So the standard logic is pretty straightforward. Forward. You have this cable here which will connect on either end because you'll notice it's got both female and male connections on it. So it has the pins 
and it also has the metal connectors. So you have a choice of which way around you plug your cable in to which end. This is obviously very nice for when you're building because it means that you can run the cable in the right direction. You can neaten things up, maybe hide the connector away. So as standard, that's a pretty straightforward setup there. And then it will just plug into the control box. Now this controller has four connectors on it, the flat connectors that you've seen as standard. You will notice there are some other differences if you've got other uni fans or you've seen them is that the cables are connected to the bottom and non-removable. I'll show you where those go in a second. Pretty straightforward logic, three fans connect up to a port, but you can also get reverse blade fans. Now these fans have blades that face the opposite direction, so they are designed to intake into your case, whereas the standard ones will exhaust. So these can pull in with the fans still facing the right way, so that means that you can have fan blades facing into your case rather than the back of the fans, so it creates a nicer aesthetic. So what I mean by this, for example, are the three fans that you see on the side there with the LCD displays and the ones on the bottom are reverse blade fans where you're basically seeing the blades facing inwards to the case and it creates a nicer look than seeing the rear of a fan is what you traditionally have to do because you'd have to mount the fan face down towards the bottom of the case in order for it to be an intake fan to pull air into the case. So you get a much nicer look with still good cooling performance here. Both lots of fans can be connected up to the same controller, so you don't need to worry about that. But what's interesting here is obviously that you can also connect the fans together. So you saw initially that I had them plugged in separately to the same controller. But what you can do is you can create groups. So you can have multiple fans all connected together with the cables that are included. So with a single pack or with a triple pack, you get these cables that join one fan onto the other and then one fan onto that one group. And you can have up to 10 fans connected like this onto a single port on the controller. So depending on how you've got your fan set up in your case, you can reduce the amount of wires running to the back to the controller and just have them grouped together like this. However, Leon Lee says if you do that with 10 fans, you'll want to use this SATA connection at the other end. This is a power connector that will connect to the power supply unit, and that ensures that the fans have got enough power to run the RGB lighting across all the devices. So that's an additional cable and a change from previous uni fans in that you'll need to run that in there. So you can see there's some complexities to the wiring here, quite a few complexities, even more so when you start looking at the controller itself. Now, as standard, this controller now has a different power connector. It uses a six pin PCIe power connector, which is a similar one to the one you'd use with your graphics card. Usually you'd have an eight pin power connector on your graphics card. Now you'd use that six pin part of that eight pin connector to connect the power for the controller. Now it's worth noting that this controller is the same whether you've got the LCD fans or the standard fans, and you can connect both to the same controller. And you can connect up to 10 fans, as I said, to a single port or multiple fans to different ports, up to 16 they say, which means groups of four up to four. The cables here that you can see have a PCIe connection, you've got a USB connection, which you'd need to connect to your motherboard to get L connect control, a five volt RGB header, which you'd need for syncing with the RGB lighting on your motherboard, and then a system fan header or chassis fan connector for controlling the fan speed via your motherboard software. So the 5 volt RGB header and the system fan header cable aren't necessary unless you want motherboard control of the fans, but the USB connection definitely is. So you want to connect that USB as a minimum as well as the PCIe power connector to make sure that you can control these fans via L-Connect, which is obviously really important for something like the LCD fans. Like the standard uni fans, the TL LCD are available in 120 and 140 mil variants, and you can buy them in single pack or three packs, and you can also get standard blade or reverse blade setups. What you're seeing here is a triple pack of reverse blades in white, obviously, in the 120 mil variant. Now they're very similar to the standard TL120s, except of course you have that display in the middle, and there is some difference in the specs of the fans as well. You are sacrificing some fan speed, air pressure, and airflow stats for the sake of the screen and the aesthetics, and there's some complexities to the way they're set up. For example, you obviously can't chain 10 of these together, and you will notice in the instructions that they are slightly different in what's included in the packaging. I mentioned already that you can put 10 fans of the standard TLs on a single controller port, but these uni fans with the LCD screens on them cannot be set up like that. You're basically allowed to group them together 
in groups of three up to a maximum of seven is the claim although it also says in the documentation that maybe it's six another important point of note is that the connectors are different so you cannot connect the cables to both ends of the fans in the same way you can the standard TL fans instead you have this cable which is clearly marked as TL LCD versus the TL LED on the left hand side here you'll notice the big difference here is it doesn't have pins in it it just has the flat female connectors instead so you can't get it the wrong way around really but definitely don't try because you don't want to damage them so if you are mixing and matching these fans in your case be careful about the installation process there because you don't want to cause any issues obviously the pins go into the flat connectors so that's the end that you need to install it in a similar way to the standard tl fans it does have an adjustable cable so you can point that in whichever direction you want by hooking it under that plastic cook on there and then orienting it the way you want so you can neaten the cables up a little bit you may have noticed with both of these designs that those connectors are pretty chunky as I said, there's no connector on the other end, so you're not looping these together. You also shouldn't mix and match these fans, so although the LCD fans will clip together with the other uni fans, you definitely shouldn't because it won't work. So you need a separate port for those fans specifically, although you can see that you can put them both on the same controller, so that is possible. So you need one dedicated port just for these fans. The other oddity here is sometimes it's noted in the manual that you might find problems with the display where in that group one of the fans isn't working and you could see that happen to me and the recommendation is actually to shuffle the fans around in that group which will really be a pain if you've already got them installed in your case and then you discover that one of the fans doesn't work and you've got to take them back out in order to move them around and reconnect them. The other thing that I mentioned earlier on in the video is that all of the fans, any of the variations of the TLs, have no screw holes visible as standard because you've got these little rubber covers over each of them. This is on both sides of the fan, so if you're mounting it on the radiator, you have to take off all of those covers, but it does mean that you have a much cleaner aesthetic once they're mounted into the case, which is a really nice highlight and something that's uh, a nice, simple addition to the build. Now, I think these are great-looking fans, from multiple angles as you can see and performance wise they're theoretically pretty fantastic as well with a good low end range where they spin nice and quietly and they certainly haven't been loud and then a good top end airflow range as well and I'll leave all the specs in the description as I said but I personally prefer the look of the infinity fans or there's definitely something to be said for being able to just see at a glance the specs of your system what your current of load is and the thermal performance really easily if you've not they've already got that on your pump head then putting it on the fans is an interesting uh, alternative option one problem that might be an issue is potentially l connect i know a lot of people complain about it and find it a bit hit and miss it can be flaky at times and if it is a problem then obviously you're going to end up with displays on your fans that aren't necessarily working i have seen a couple of instances where on boot for example the displays were rotated when they shouldn't have been but this will naturally get fixed and improved as moving forward and future L Connect releases come out. So that's something to keep in mind that you should have good upgrades there. And perhaps being an early adopter might be something to consider as a potential downside. But I really like what they're doing with these fans because it's all in here. We've got a nicer aesthetic and a nicer a bit of performance and really good build quality so a lot of nice things once again check out the links in the description to find out more about these fans and also to see my other content on lee and the evo rgb and thanks very much for watching you've made it right to the end of the video you brilliant legend you if you've enjoyed it click that subscribe button give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions if you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.